And if there's one dish that fits the bill, it's black back perch stew. Come on, let's pay a visit to one Min restaurant. Hey, guess who's here? Oh, no way! It's the Traveler and Paimon. Ah, Traveler, welcome. Good to see you. What can I get for you? We want some black back perch stew. All right, black back perch stew it is. Make yourselves at home. It'll be right out for you in just a moment. Thanks, Chef Mao! I was just thinking about you guys, and now you're here. It feels like you heard my call and came running. <laughs> you mean you were about to come looking for us? Uh-huh. There's something I want to discuss with you guys. Did you happen to see how the city looked on the way over here? Everyone's getting ready for the Moon Chase Festival. Moon Chase Festival? Is that another one of Liyue's ancient traditions? And that's right! Moon Chase is a big festival where we celebrate the arrival of the fall by moonlight. The old folks say that thousands of years ago, this was the time of the year when the Adepti would seek the way. But it's completely different nowadays. We eat our favorite foods, spend time with friends and relatives, enjoy the moon and the flowers. So much easier. Basically, we just do all the things that people like doing and don't take a whole lot of effort. Sounds like Paimon's kind of festival. <laughs> with your great taste in food, Moon Chase Festival is sure to be to your liking. Hey, if you got a problem with Paimon's taste, just spit it out. Um, so are you guys free these days? I'm taking part in this year's Masterful Chefs. If possible, I'd like you to be my culinary consultants. That's right. Getting some suggestions from friends will broaden your horizons. Masterful chefs, huh? So is that like a competition? <laughs> All right, yeah. I guess you probably haven't heard about it before. Every year, Moon Chase Festival has a different theme, usually picked by the Qixing. This year's theme is Feast of the Bounteous Land, so the Qixing decided to organize a cooking competition. Feast of the Bounteous Land. Pretty much sums up what Leo is all about. Great theme. I totally agree. I heard it was Ningguang that came up with it. She's so amazing and so full of mystery. Well, I want to take part in the competition. But coming up with new dishes is hard work. By the time you finally thought of something, cooked it, taste tested it, it can be hard to judge whether you're really into something or not. So, I was thinking, I could get the two of you to help by gathering everyone's thoughts on what makes a great dish. I really want to think outside the box this time. And to do that, I'm going to need lots of different ideas from lots of different people. This will be a piece of cake! We've got friends from all over the map, haven't we? <laughs> you sound pretty confident. Well, you know, not to brag or anything. But first things first, let's have a delicious one-man meal. After that, we can go around to all of our friends in Liyue and get their ideas one by one. Okay, great. Also, Goba should be back soon, so we can all go together. Here's your black back perch stew, folks. Mmm, it smells so good. <laughs> it's my pleasure. That was so delicious. Theory confirmed, this is definitely chili pepper weather. Sheng Ling can be a bit of a handful, so please look out for her while you're out and about. Come on, Dad. Why would you say that? Because I know you all too well, my dear. That's why. You mustn't be quite so reckless when you're out in the wild, you understand? You do well to be a little more cautious, like our traveler friend. Don't worry. We're all friends here. Let's all look out for each other. Ah, oh, and Gloma's back. Rolly pulling around as usual. All right, let's pack up and head out.
box thinking that we're looking for, right? Hutao always seems to have a unique perspective, so let's make this our first stop. What, what, what? My ears are burning. Did somebody say my name? Uh, yeah, it's Paimon and the Traveler. Oh, and Xiangling, too. Oh, of course, Hutao. Way, way outside the box. Meaning, you're here for some other reason, right? How might I be of assistance? Well, Hu Tao, I wanted to ask you, what kind of food do you like? What food I like? Hmm, off the top of my head, I don't really have an answer. Wow, so even Hu Tao gets lost for words sometimes. Paimon sure didn't see that coming. Come on, even the chirpiest birds clock out for the night, right? I'm no different. Ah, uh, pretty sure clocking out isn't something birds do, but okay. <laughs> All right, there's no need to overcomplicate it. Just pick a dish and tell me what you like about it. I'm doing some market research. I see, I see. Launching a new dish? Well, let me say right off the bat, nothing weird, okay? Some poached fish, a side of shrimp dumplings, that is all you need. Mmm, poached fish and shrimp dumplings, that's a bit ordinary, isn't it? Well, it is, and it isn't. Think about it, poached fish is hot and spicy with a powerful aroma. It's a dynamic dish. Add a side of shrimp dumplings, and there's your static component. Got it? Dynamic? Hmm. Oh, I can do dynamic. Mushroom slimes do it. No, 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 not that kind of dynamic. <laughs> a dish is more than substance, it's a mood. Poached fish is red and spicy. It elicits a response from the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. That's why I call it dynamic. Shrimp dumplings are more subdued, clear and smooth with a pure and subtle fragrance. I call that static. Combining dynamic and static is how you create a perfectly balanced meal. A union between opposite but complementary features coexisting in perfect harmony. Uh, Paimon didn't follow that at all. But at the same time, it kind of sounded smart, so... Okay, dynamic and static. Opposite but complementary. Um, so is this just should keep everything balanced? You know, a little meat, a little veggie, a little salt, a little sugar? Bingo! Except I don't think you need to have a sweet dish for it to be a complete meal. Personally, I always skip dessert. Okay, I think I got it. At first I thought you were just goofing around, but actually you make a really good point. <laughs> How did I ever doubt you, Hu Tao? Thanks! When it comes to telling tales, the storytellers have got nothing on Hu Tao. Hmm? Sounds suspiciously like a compliment to me. I'll take it. Uh-huh. Well, at least one of you gets it. Everything in this world runs on its own set of principles. Be it the circle of life or sugar and spice. You either get it or you don't. Since the traveler seems to approve, I'll make sure to factor it in. Paimon thinks we're pretty much done here now. Let's head to Boo Boo Pharmacy next! Boo Boo Pharmacy? Yeah, you'll definitely get some interesting responses over there. <laughs> Is everything okay? Why, if it isn't the special guests who seldom visit. Less busy than usual, I see. Yikes! Oh, what happened to Baiju's voice? Excuse me? The neck! Oh, it's just Changsheng. 
<laughs> welcome, welcome. Here to procure an herbal remedy, I presume? No, no. We actually came for the conversation this time. We're here to talk food. I'm entering this year's cooking competition, so I wanted to ask you both... Oh, wait, there's three of you. <laughs> I wanted to ask the three of you what kind of food you like. <laughs> Most astutely self-corrected, we shall surely supply our assistance. You need to know what food I like? Hmm... It's all the same. No flavor. Chi-Chi has some gustatory dysfunction and can't taste any food. Make no mistake, she's not being uncooperative. Oh, I understand. That's fine. Still, I'd expect Chi-Chi to have some sort of dietary preferences, though. There must be some dishes that you like the sensation of. Sensation? Hmm... Yes. There's one. Coconut milk. Nice and cold. Well, that doesn't help us. It's not a dish, it's a drink. How about you two? Any thoughts? I like bite-sized morsels of meat. I agree with Changsheng. Many of our patients are the elderly and young children. They find large chunks of fowl or seafood difficult to swallow and digest. Dishes where the ingredients have been finely chopped, on the other hand, are far more suitable for them. We also see plenty of people with colds and sore throats who find it difficult to eat rich food. From a purely pharmaceutical perspective, I tend to recommend soups and stews. Got it! Uh, would that be medicinal soups and stews? Ugh, medicinal soup. I don't like it. Hmm, I must apologize for having such a one-track mind. It's a little difficult to think about food without worrying about the health implications these days. We've had quite the endless stream of patients recently. If you ask me, I think the changing weather is to blame. That's okay. Everyone's input counts. Keeping it seasonal and suitable for all ages sounds like a pretty good idea to Paimon. Medicinal dishes have higher demands in terms of nutritional balance than the kind of food I normally cook. I don't usually focus on medicinal properties, but since this is for a competition, maybe I can score more points by taking both flavor and function into account. Food with substance. Always better. Everyone will like it. That's a great suggestion. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. As long as we could help. It's great to have a doctor's unique perspective. I'm feeling inspired. Oh, how you flatter me. Receptivity to sensible suggestions make for a savvy chef. Oh, she is! Creating new dishes is Xiangling's favorite thing to do! You can be sure she'll put lots of care and attention into it. <laughs> Everyone's got their hobbies, and mine is cooking! Usually I just go with my own ideas, but having a whole new perspective this time is sure to make a big difference to the end result. Great! That makes this whole trip worth it! Alright, time to move on to the next! So we've got an independent thinker's perspective and a health perspective. Hmm. Next, Paimon thinks we should probably talk to some picky eaters. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It's the Traveler in Paimon. And Xiongling. Uh, greetings, friends. It's been a while. Hey, what brings you here? Has something happened? What's with this great big stone on the ground? Long story. So, just to confirm, I will assume responsibility for handling this stone of unknown origin. Any objections? None here. You know how to get things done, Kuching. As long as it's with you, I can rest easy knowing that it's in safe hands. Mm, should I take this to mean that you doubt the relative safety of leaving this in the hands of the Tianchuan? Huh? Well, for starters, Keqing is the one who's always out running errands, rain or shine. Besides, you don't seem to give a wooden more about this whole thing anyway, so what's it to you? I was merely joking. You, meanwhile, seem only too ready to pounce when an opportunity to publicly lambaste me arises. Even when it means giving our poor mutual friend here the cold shoulder. By no means. You wish to know about the stone, I presume? Then let me invite the great seafarer Captain Beto to tell the story, if she would be so kind. You... Ugh, fine. Well, it's a big one, right? And such a smooth surface, too. Makes you think there's got to be a good chunk of jade in there. It was found by a fishing crew, not far off the coast. It must have been underwater for years. So the erosion will be what's given it that smooth finish. Finds like this cannot be kept as private property, and must be submitted to a holder of public office. Placing it into our custody will also give them peace of mind. So, what's inside it? Well, we've hit it with just about every weapon we could get our hands on and haven't managed to even dent it yet. Clearly there's more to it than meets the eye. No weapon could smash it open. Wow. Paimon doesn't think we've ever encountered a stone like that before. Kuching has taken an unusually keen interest in this giant stone, which is why we are leaving the matter in her capable hands. Let's put that aside for a second. Traveler, what brings you here? Were you looking for someone? Actually, we were looking for all of you! We need all hands on deck here! Oh? Hopefully not because there's been some sort of cataclysmic event. No, no, nothing like that. Paimon's just getting carried away. I just wanted to ask everyone about their food preferences. Food preferences? That's a little unexpected. I have rather simple tastes. Precise, pure, smart, and sophisticated. That is all I require. That's your idea of simple, huh? I summed up my culinary requirements in four words. Is that insufficiently simple for you? A few weeks out on the open ocean would fix your flawed definition of simplicity, let me tell you that. What about you, Beto? Me? Ah, uh, if it's freshly cooked and piping hot, that floats my boat. It's got a little chili pepper in there, too. I'm one very happy captain. Paimon thought you would have said bar food. <laughs> oh, bar food works, too. As for me, it's got to be seafood. Okay, got it. So, seafood, piping hot, and, uh, a simple but sophisticated. And that's where I would disagree. Traveler, surely you've heard of golden shrimp balls. <sighs> oh my, they're my favorite. You need to wash and devein the shrimp, wrap it in finely sliced potato strips, then deep fry it to perfection. There's no room for cutting corners. They're very precisely put together. They taste pure, the presentation is smart, and the skill needed to cook them is highly sophisticated. It fits Ningguang's forward summary to the letter. Huh. So what you're saying is, for all the frills and trills, good food is all the same at the core? I heartily agree. Golden shrimp balls are a prime example. Their essence lies in combining art and nutrition in a single package. It is a dish of true value. Okay, got it. So Kuching loves golden shrimp balls. Uh, I didn't say that. Did I? <laughs> no, at least not outright. Alrighty! Thanks for all your input! I'll be sure to take it all into consideration. 
Traveler, Paimon, do you have anything planned after this? Good. I'd like you to help me investigate something. It's about this stone. You picked the right people for the job. We investigate stuff all the time. My thoughts exactly. The Qixing has a public duty to deliver our final verdict to the fishermen, but there are also some things I would like to investigate on a personal level. I'm sure you've become acquainted with the general background of the Moonchase Festival. However, I have my own understanding of this festival's roots. My grandfather was a researcher of Liyue's traditions. In his notes, he indicated that there was a deity called the Stove God in ancient Liyue, which people paid tribute to at a certain time of the year. Very few written records make mention of the Stove God, and those that do are notoriously confusing. Some scholars believe that the Stove God was just another title held by the Lord of Geo, but others suggest that this was a different deity altogether. One folktale even claims that the ancients found the Stove God's shrine, but there was no statue. Only a huge, smooth slab of stone. Shortly after it was found, the stone was lost in transit, and it hasn't been seen since. This stone here has all the same features, so I suspect it could be the one that went missing all those years ago. After many years of researching ancient texts, my grandfather came to believe that the practice of paying seasonal tribute to the Stove God may be best described as a festival. He called it the Stove God Festival. That would make it the forerunner to the Moonchase Festival we know today. But this is all just theory and conjecture. To prove any of it, we'd need to start by identifying who the Stove God really was. Now that Rex Lapis has passed on, and Liwa has entered the age of humankind, his successor should continue to respect our nation's culture and traditions, just as he did. That's why I think the responsibility for this situation should fall to me. It's a chance to shed light on our history, revitalize an ancient tradition, and possibly prove my grandfather's hypothesis along the way. With any luck, we'll nail all three in one fell swoop. It was just a couple of days ago that we received this stone. Right after, we decided to use food as the central theme for this year's festival. It makes me wonder. Maybe a divine will is at work behind all of this. Three birds with one stone, huh? That's pretty efficient, even for cooking. Hey, don't worry about that. This sounds super important, so don't mind me. Besides, we're only... <laughs> Wait a second. I got it! What? Why are you shouting? ka can I tag along for your investigation? Uh-huh, uh, but... Since it's all about the stove god, I might get to learn something useful about cooking along the way. It'll be great inspiration for me in the competition. Please, let me come along. I promise I'll help. If it means that much to you... Okay, I suppose you can come. Really? Yay! Thank you so much! You're the best! <clears throat> now that that's settled, time to get going. Jingsa Village is said to be home to a lot of historical texts, so I'd like to start by making some inquiries there. Alright, then it's off to Jingsa we go! We need your help with something. Are there any old books around Qingzu village? You know, from a really long time ago? Oh, looking for ancient texts, are we? Hmm, let me think. There is an old warehouse over there, property of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Many books are stored inside. Those that they have no room for at home. In fact, their youngest comes over this way to read sometimes. The Feiyun Commerce Guild's youngest? You must be talking about Xingxiu. Hyman didn't know they had a warehouse here. Let's go take a look! <laughs>
are being robbed! It came from that direction. Come on! Who's next? I've come here to clean the book warehouse plenty of times before. But this is the first time I've run into these crooks. Are you all right? I am, thanks to all of you. Hey, wait a minute. You're the traveler, aren't you? And you're with... Uh, Lady Kutring. An honor. Truly an honor. We'll try not to take up too much of your time. I understand that this book warehouse is the property of the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Could you advise whether we might find any text relating to the stove god in this collection? Um, the stove god? Uh, I, I heard that's the Lord of Geo, right? Huh? Really? Yeah, a friend of mine who conducts research mentioned it once before. We use stoves for cooking, and stoves are built from rock. Some people think that the stove is a gift from the Lord of Geo, and that's why they call him the stove god. Seems logical enough. But do you have any books on the topic? Um, I, uh... I I'm sorry, I'd have to ask the young master about that. Oh, any questions? Please, ask away. Hey, it's Chung Yun and Xin Cho. Hello, one and all. Hey guys, what are you doing here? I was bored with nothing to do, and thought I'd come out this way for a bit of reading. And then I thought, why not bring Chung Yun along too? <laughs> yes, I'm just along for the ride, really. I see the Yuhang Kuching is with you. Hmm. Whatever brings you here must surely be a matter of grave importance. Master Xingqiu, if I may be so bold, do you happen to know if there are any texts on the subject of the Stove God among this collection? Since I personally selected which volumes to store here, I do have some recollection of their contents. If my memory betrays me not, there is one volume among them called Demystifying the Legends of Liyue, which mentions the Stove God. Might I take a look? Certainly. If it pleases my lady, I shall lead the way. Sheng, I will take care of things here. You're free to go about your own business. They're back! So did you find it? Yes, Master Xingqiu has quite an exceptional memory. Demystifying the Legends of Liyue does indeed mention the Stove God. However, it says the following. <clears throat> The body of the dragon wielded a tail that could eclipse the sun, and claws to command fire and teach the ways of wisdom. Receiving the gift bequeathed unto them, humankind cooked food with fire, and thus did they prosper. The body of a dragon? The stories about Rex Lapis say the same thing. That much is true, but this is the only passage in the whole book. If we want to find out more, we'll have to continue our investigation. There's nothing further to discover here. It seems we'll have to look at other options. I come from a long lineage of exorcists, and our family too has amassed a number of ancient texts. Now that you mention the stove god, I seem to recall reading somewhere that this god once appeared at the Guayli Assembly. Of course, I can't say if it's true or not. Books are penned by people. All they can do is show what the author was thinking. Everyone's mind is different, so every book on a given topic will give a different account. I apologize that we could not help in a more substantial capacity. Your help thus far is quite ample. Liyue is a vast and rich land. All things that existed here in the past have left their trace. So long as we do not abandon our search, it is sure to bear fruit eventually. Thank you all. We will continue our investigation elsewhere. Uh, hold up! I had a question too. Xinchu, Chongyun, could you tell me what kind of food you like? Food? Oh no. Y you're not thinking of taking part in the masterful chefs, are you? Uh, yeah, I totally am. What's wrong? You look like you've just seen a ghost. Shangling, 
This is a major event. I beg you, please don't cook anything strange for this competition. What do you mean, strange? <laughs> Mushroom slime stew, to give one example. Okay, fair enough. That dish isn't my most popular. But that's why I'm doing all this research, so I can create some really special dishes to win everyone over. Well, in that case, I like cold food. That's because you can't handle hot and spicy, right? <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. My tastes are on the mild side. I prefer gentle dishes with minimal seasoning. Soups and stews, vegetables and broth, seafood or freshwater fish, either boiled or steamed. These kinds of dishes I am most partial to. No surprises from the Gugu -Gu Geek. Okay, another mild child. Got it. These are just personal preferences, and everyone's are quite different. Are you sure this eclectic mix of opinions will be of any use? Of course! You're my customers, and putting a smile on customers' faces is my calling as a chef. Though Xiangling's market research blade stabs often into the dark, her heart never strays from the noble path. If anyone can win the hearts and minds with their cooking, it's gotta be someone like Xiang Ling. She's got pure intentions and really cares about the customers. No, where's all this praise coming from? Knock it off, guys. You're embarrassing me. Uh, sorry for holding you all up. That's all I needed to know. Shall we carry on with the investigation now? Over to you, Kuching. Where to next? Hmm. So we've learned the stove god allegedly made an appearance at the Gwaili Assembly. But today that place is largely a wasteland with few traces of human activity. Longshu Inn is close by, so let's stop off there on the way over and see what we can find out. Forgive us, for this is where we must part ways. May your journey be a smooth one. Yes, best of luck. If you run into any difficulties, come and find us. We'll be only too glad to help. Let's go! Next stop, Wangshu Inn! Traveler, who are all these people? Friends of ours! Allow Paimon to introduce Xiangling, Guoba, and Kuching! Kuching? Of the Chishing? She's the, um, 
<laughs> um. Hi. It's not that. It's. I mean, I'm just your typical commoner. I've never met someone as high up as the Yuhang before in my whole life. Look at that strong body, those powerful hands, and honest eyes. This guy must be a really great chef. So, is there something I can help you with? You've come a long way out to end up at Wangshu Inn. Let me fill you in. Oh, okay. I see. Legends claim that the stove god once appeared at the Guili Assembly. As Wang Xuan is the oldest extant building in this area, any historical texts from around these parts are likely to have ended up here. Is there a room in this inn for storing books? And if there is, do any of them mention the stove god? Well, now that you mention it, we do have a fair few ancient texts here. I remember looking through an old recipe book once. I just need to remember where they're all stored. If you are happy to wait here for a few minutes, I'll go have a look right away. Oh, uh, Traveler, there's something I need to discuss with you. What is it? We need to pay up or something? What? No, I wouldn't take your money. We're all friends here. I just wanted to ask if you had the time to make a satisfying salad for me. A satisfying salad? What for? Yeah, guy who hangs out on the roof terrace, you know? Good looking fella, not too tall. Shh, don't you think he can hear you? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, maybe. Anyway, you know who I mean. The boss told me to take care of him, but this guy, let me tell you, he is one tough nut to crack. He usually turns his nose up at everything that isn't almond tofu. But the boss tells me you once made him a satisfying salad, and it all went down so well. So, I was thinking, could you teach me how to make it too? That way, I'll have something else in my arsenal. You guys really look after him, huh? Well, that's life, right? You gotta look out for your own people. All right, then. Wait right here. I'll be just one minute. Clock is ticking! 59, 58... Sorry for the trouble, Traveler. Okay. Here you are. Thank you ever so much. reading her book, let's make that satisfying salad. Xiang Ling, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'd love to come watch too, but I don't want to get in the way, so I'll just stay here with Kuching. Okay, shall we go then? Go ahead and get started. I'll just watch from over here. I only need to watch you make it once to have it committed to memory. That should do it. <laughs> All right, thanks for that. I think I've got it now. You got all the steps down, right? Of course. Don't forget, I am the best chef around these parts. Let's go see what Kuching and Xiangling are up to. Kuching, Xiangling, we're back! You finished cooking? Good timing. We finished our reading, too. And? Useful? Or no? Useful. There is a passage concerning the stove god, and it's not what we were expecting. I quote, <clears throat> 60 miles to the northwest is the Guili Assembly. Many were settled there, where they hunted in groups, farmed the land, and made their living from what the soil yielded. When the stove god descended, one god became many, all of which were the height of children. As does a star when it descends into the world, so the stove god went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. With fire, the people at last learned to make hot food, and they dined on rice kanji and cooked meat thereafter. This is a radically different account from the one given in demystifying the legends of Liyue, and also a conflicting one. One god became many? Hmm, does that mean there was more than one stove god? Taking the text at face value, that is what it says. Went out among the common folk and taught them to create fire. So did the stove god really go and teach people how to cook firsthand? Now that's a god who truly cared for their people. So we've got two leads, but they contradict each other. How do we know which one to believe? By continuing our investigation and reserving judgment for now. 
Thank you for this text, Yan Xiao. It's my pleasure, really. Think nothing of it. If anything, I should be thanking the traveler. Listen, you've helped me an awful lot. Not just today, but in the past, too. I want to make it up to you properly, and as it happens, things are pretty quiet here today. So I'd like to take the chance to treat you all. What do you say? Will you stay for a meal? Wow, he sure sounds confident in his cooking. I like that. Confidence is one of the best ingredients a chef can have. I really want to try his cooking. I say we take him up on his offer. It's hard to refuse a generous offer like that. Yes, I think we can fit this in. Yan Xiao, we await your culinary creations with great anticipation. <laughs> I won't disappoint. the place. I'll sit here with Guba. Lo, lo, lo. Lo, lo. Here we are. That's everything you ordered. <sighs> it all smells amazing. I think I've met my fellow finalist. Mm, it smells Strange. I never would have guessed that such a gifted chef worked here. The Sen isn't particularly known for its food. Everyone likes a good meal, whether they're staying the night or just stopping by for a bite. We call it an inn, but the fact is it's much more than that. We have to cater to all aspects of daily life to make this a true home away from home. <sighs> Please enjoy your meal at your leisure. I should get back to work now. Yan Xiao, are you taking part in this year's Masterful Chefs? Uh, huh? Y you too? Yep, I've signed up already, and I've got my eyes on the prize. <laughs> Your cooking's delicious, Yan Xiao. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the final. Huh, interesting. All right, I'll see you there. What was that? Some kind of power move? No, it seemed more sportsmanlike than that. Yep, he's a really talented chef. His food was excellent, and it showed he has a level-headed personality. That's the kind of chef that could be a match for me. I haven't had any competitive cooking experience since my cook-off with Brooke in Springvale. <laughs> You're too kind. Guoba, uh, what are you doing? No. Uh, Guoba's eating the... Those were kitchens! How could you steal them while she wasn't looking? Oh, my golden shrimp balls. Huh? You ate every last one? Oh, Guoba, we've been through this. When we're with friends, you gotta be on your best behavior, okay? I'm so sorry, Kuching. I promise I'll make it up to you. A big deal. We can just get another plate. After all, it's Yan Chao's treat today. It's not the same, though. The moment's gone. Sure, you can eat something else, but you can never go back and change the feeling of despair as your food is snatched away from right under your nose. The dining experience is a trinity of emotion, food, and atmosphere, and you've got to have all three to make it work. <sighs> I have to say, now that you mention it, that is a very accurate appraisal of the situation. I'm gonna make it up to you, Kaching. Is there anything you want to eat? Anything at all. Whatever it is, I'll make it for you. Hmm. I don't have high hopes for this. But equally, I don't want her feeling guilty. <sighs> okay, I'll let her do this for me. If you insist, there is one dish that perhaps you could try making for me. It's an old recipe from my grandfather's notes. No problem. May I see it? I'll get it to you when we're back in Liwa Harbor. Traveler, have you finished eating? Before we do anything else, let's head back to Liwa Harbor. I need to fetch something.
I need to go home to fetch my grandfather's notes. Let's meet at Wanman Restaurant later. Great! I'll go get everything ready. Traveler, what about you? Are you gonna do your own thing for a while, or do you want to come in and have a seat? I actually have something to discuss with him. You go ahead. We'll join you later. Okay, gotcha! Traveler, come here for a moment. I need your advice on something. What do I need to do to get along with Xiongling? Seriously? That's what's stressing you out? What's so strange about it? Why are you looking at me like that? You're super smart, and you're always so sure of yourself. Paimon thought you'd never need advice from anyone about anything. Well, that's just ridiculous. Xiongling's always so warm and friendly with me. This time especially. And now she's desperate to do me a favor. So, is that supposed to mean... We're friends already? I'm just not used to dealing with people who are so warm right from the get-go. How exactly am I supposed to respond to that? Uh, oh, um, okay. <clears throat> Noted. Thank you, Traveler. I'll see you again shortly. Huh. What's making Kunching so self-conscious? Paimon thought nobody would be able to get under her skin. through my ingredients to see what I'm missing. Oh, we're gonna do this now? What is it? <laughs> this is your idea! Why you gotta dump it on Paimon? Ugh. Okay, so back at Longshu Inn, we noticed you and Kuching were getting along pretty well. So you really like hanging out with her, huh? <laughs> yep. Kuching's good-natured and easy to be around. The kind of person everyone wants to know, right? You're a braver person than Paimon. The first time we met Kuching, Paimon found her pretty intimidating. You think so? I remember thinking straight away that she was really easy to get along with. Didn't you see her sneaking treats to Goba back at Wangshu Inn? Yeah, she's great. We know that now. We're just talking about first impressions. First impressions? Oh, okay. Hmm. Hey, have you guys eaten grilled shellfish before? They can be hard to crack at first, but they taste amazing that way. We've eaten shellfish before, but I don't think we've ever tried eating them grilled. Oh, you're missing out. I'll grill some for you another time. But anyway, Kuching's like a shellfish. Maybe a little closed off at first, but once you get to know her, she's got a soft and squishy side, too. Not to mention that even after her favorite food was stolen away, she was still happy looking after Guoba. I'm really grateful for that. You make a good point. You know, Xiang Ling's intuition for people seems really spot on. Is that why she took a liking to Kuching so quickly? All right, let's see. We're okay for carrots and crab, and we still got some ham and mushrooms. Hmm, I wonder what Kuching's recipe is gonna be. Huh? What was that noise? What's going on? What the? That bird is huge! Ah, it's the ladybird! Excuse me, one shall not be addressed in such a manner. One shall be known as Adeptus, whose name, should you care to mention it, is Cloud Retainer. Cloud Retainer? That does sound like an Adeptus name. Well spoken. One shall let this young lady's enlightened words atone for the ignorant ones of her friend. A while it has indeed been, Traveler. Does one surmise correctly that you hasten hither to partake in the Moon Chase Festival? Ah, so even the illustrious traveler has been summoned to attend the Moon Chase Festival. 
As expected, this year's theme stands proud against the test of public scrutiny. The theme? You mean Feast of the Bounteous Land? The very same. Moon Chase Festival falls during the season when many cooking ingredients are ripe. Hence, it is a fitting time to enjoy the finest of foods. One notice the relative pomp and ceremony with which this year's affairs are being conducted, and could not abide to stand idly by. Let it be known that one's culinary proficiency and ingenuity is uncontested in all the world. Thus does one now appear in this realm, that those who inhabit it might witness one's latest creation, a supreme cuisine machine. Uh, a supreme cuisine what? What's a supreme cuisine machine? Patience. One's purpose here today is to meet and to greet. Nothing further. All shall be revealed before your very eyes when the time arrives. Traveler, you are one who has witnessed much of the culinary world. When the day comes, one would be most pleased to see you in attendance, offering your most vociferous ovations. Oh, so we're officially invited? Hmm. That which is implicitly understood needs not be made explicit, let alone official. I shall say no more and dwell here no longer. Await my word. Be there or beware. This bird always disappears just as quickly as she shows up. Oh, wait, not bird, Adeptus. Hey, wait, isn't she technically an illuminated bird, though? She seemed like someone very prestigious and very talented at cooking. She definitely, definitely loves her food. What are you all huddled together over here for? The Adeptus left already. Yay, Kunching's back! Sorry I kept you waiting, Xiangling. This is the recipe from my grandfather's notes. They're not in the best condition, so rather than bring them out of the house, I just transcribed the recipe. Unfortunately, the texts my grandfather worked with were very old, usually faded, damaged, or both. Some parts are missing from this recipe, too. Uh, do you think you'll still be able to work with it? Oh, okay. Let me take a look. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Give me some time. I need to look into it. Sorry for the trouble. Oh, uh, you're all here? That voice sounds familiar! Sorry to interrupt your conversation. I was in the area buying a few things, and I heard the disturbance, so I felt compelled to come take a look. You mean Cloud Retainer? I saw her too. She just suddenly showed up right in the middle of the street. <laughs> Whatever adeptal power that was, she certainly knows how to make an entrance. Lady Kutching, you saw her too? <sighs> Do you... Uh, have a moment? I need to... discuss something with you. What is it, Ganyu? Has something urgent come up while I've been out? No, it's nothing work-related. I wanted to ask about... Um... something personal. Is that okay? A personal matter? Involving me? Surely I haven't done anything improper recently, have I? Please, Lady Kuching? This is really important to me. Oh, uh, okay. I noticed Cloud Retainer was here for quite a while. Did she say anything about... Mm, me? When I was young? About your childhood? No, nothing at all. What? Really? Whew. Thank goodness. I was getting really worried. Once she gets talking to people, she tends to go off on all sorts of tangents. So I was worried she might have bored you with some stories about me. <sighs> Your name didn't even come up, so you've nothing to worry about. Kuching, how are you not asking a bunch of questions right now? There's obviously some juicy gossip here. Aren't you curious to find out what it is? Ah, uh, please, no, don't do that to me. Of course not. Whatever it is, I'm not curious and I'm not going to ask. If Ganyu has a secret and she wishes to keep it that way, 
Nobody should make it their business to try and get it out of her. That's just basic decency, is it not? Uh, yes, ma'am. Paimon will never bring it up again. Kuching, I... Thank you. You're so kind and considerate. I've always seen that in you. What's that got to do with... <sighs> Honestly... Go on, you should be getting back now. Oh my, you're right, I should. Okay, everyone, please excuse me. I should get back to work now. Take good care of Kuching for me. Hey, what are you trying to say? Ah, uh, don't worry, Ganyu, we will. <laughs> Thanks. Hope to see you again soon. <sighs> just ignore her. Hey, everyone! I just had an idea! It only really occurred to me when that Adeptus showed up. Do you think the Stove God could be an Adeptus, too? Ooh, could be! I don't want to assert either way, but it seems highly likely. In that case, we should go ask the Adepti about it. I think my master might be able to help. Master? You mean, your teacher is an Adeptus? Uh-huh. She's over at Eugene Terrace. Come on, I'll introduce you. Hello, Shangling. Uh, uh, Madam Ping is Shangling's master? I did not expect that. Master, how are you keeping these days? Are you well? Oh, very well, thank you. What a surprise it is that you all had the time to come and visit me today. Hello. Master, we came here because we have a question for you. Do you know about the Stove God? Of course I know the Stove God. Does this mean you know them personally? Ah, I see. It's the Moon Chase Festival, isn't it? How interesting. <laughs> so you came to hear some stories about the Stove God. That's right. We're investigating something that happened recently. I see. The Great Stone Surfaces. <laughs> and so, you open an investigation. <laughs> I must commend your guesswork this far. I did indeed know the Stove God of whom you speak, but it was a great many years ago. <laughs> Moonchase was originally a rite observed by the Adepti, not something in which the ordinary people of Liyue would ever partake. But over the years, they have sought to emulate it for themselves many times, giving rise to various festivals bearing the Moon Chase name. On nights when the moon shone bright, everybody would get together for joyful reunions. There would be fine food, fine wines, and choice teas. Later, Rex Lapis unified all of these various festivals under the Moon Chase name to honor an old friend of his. In short, the heavens were our witness as we vowed to the moon to come together in joyful solidarity, to remember the past and reflect upon the present. That is the meaning of the Moon Chase Festival. Rex Lapis. <sighs> <laughs> that friend made many contributions to Liyue, and Rex Lapis would not have them go unrecognized. Turning this season into a commemoration of his old friend was also a way to honor that friendship. 
I can only presume that the Stove God Festival was one of the many subsumed into the Moonchase Festival. In the hands of Rux Lapis, our nation's traditions were faithfully upheld. It is to their detriment that we must now be the ones to inherit this duty. Ah, oh, Kuching, I simply won't allow you to be so down on yourself. Nothing would delight Rex Lapis more than to know that those who follow in his footsteps continue to value these traditions and are working tirelessly to do them justice. Thank you. Lady Kuching. Huh? Lady Kuching, Lady Ningguang wishes to speak with you. Ningguang's looking for me? Must be important. Please excuse me, everyone. If I'm not back soon, you'll find me at Ningguang's office. There she goes! Hmm... Kaching's a lot more serious when she's got her work face on. Do you want to know who Rex Lapis's friend was? Oh! Oh! Paimon does! Yes, precisely! There are few genuine coincidences in the world. The story of the Lost Festival and the Old Friend are indeed one and the same. The Stove God was a good friend of mine, too. What a pity it is that the god is now gone both from the world and from people's memories. How could that happen? It is to everyone's regret that the stove god passed. But gods cannot be fully destroyed, and we made a pact to wait until the land became fruitful once more. For perhaps the stove god would then return, albeit in a new form really master you must miss the stove god a lot right from the way you talk about it all it sounds like you were the best of friends yes thinking back on it all there are many fond memories i'm pleasantly surprised to find the kuching is investigating this she is a tenacious child and anything she sets her mind to she will diligently pursue it warms my heart and makes me want to give her a helping hand. Unfortunately, however, I cannot simply give her the answer, for the process is of great importance to her. Kuching's grandfather once researched the Stove God, and now she follows in his footsteps. Since Kuching has inherited this conundrum, so too she must inherit the journey to its resolution. You knew Kuching's grandpa? Of course, I count all the people of Liyue among my good friends. I remember when he was the same age as Kuching is now. <laughs> ah, so young. Grandparent and grandchild are definitely made from the same mold. Both diligent enough to take on anything and bold enough to see it through to the end. I like to think of Liyue as my own little potted plant. I've watched it grow and blossom, and it grows more beautiful all the time. In the blink of an eye, the buds of yesterday are in full bloom today. <laughs> it's wonderful to see. For new blossoms must bloom on the branches if the tree is to remain evergreen and ever young. My dears, you are absolutely right to focus your investigation on the stone. It is, as you suppose, the lost statue of the Stove God, and within it lie all the answers that you seek. I should like to see the stone for myself, if you would lead me to it. Perhaps the truth will emerge even as we watch on. Here, I was just about to send someone to fetch you. Kuching, has the stone undergone any changes? A crack has appeared in one corner, but we still can't tell what's inside. What happened? Did someone chip it while no one else was looking? More likely a natural occurrence. 
Our weapons have had no effect on it. How would a natural occurrence crack it open? This is because the Stove God draws power from the actions of the masses. The heat of a busy kitchen. The joy of a reunion. <laughs> Keep up the good work, and the truth will rise to the surface soon enough. All the books say the Stove God is the deity of food. So is the stone opening up because everyone's cooking for the festival? Hmm. Statues draw power from their people. So, if the Stove God has dominion over cooking, could it be that the passion people put into their cooking gives power to the Stove God? Ningguang and I chose Feast of the Bounteous Land as this year's theme, and now every chef signed up for the competition is busy preparing. Paimon's theory is not an unreasonable one. Plus, a lot of families have reunion feasts around this time. With everyone back home, the whole city's bustling with people, and that adds a lot to the festive atmosphere. So if the stone cracked because Leo has started getting festive, that must mean that when the festive fever peaks, it'll bust right open, right? That's gotta be it, right, Master? <laughs> well, we'll have to see then, won't we? Okay, the fact that cooking is involved gives us a perfect opportunity. The selection space of Masterful Chefs will be held indoors and seen by only a few people, but the finals will be held outside in public. Everyone who wants to will be able to come and watch it. The atmosphere will be incredibly lively, no question. And when the finals end, boom! We'll get to see who the Stove God really is, right? It's definitely a possibility. Well, I've already signed up, so I should be able to help. Yes, for a chef as accomplished as yourself, getting to the finals should be a breeze. All this talk of cooking competitions is making Paimon hungry. Oh, Paimon can't wait! It'd be great if Paimon could take a nap and then wake up when it's the finals. Closer. Huh. Don't get frostbite. Covenant of the deep. Yeah. Add the frying pan into the fire. Your oh, uh, I try not to enjoy. Up a little. This moment will be frozen in time. 